greetings of the day to all of you today we are going to discuss after you know after having discussed two techniques of uh, pwm pulse width modulation that is bipolar pwm and unipolar pwm today we are going to discuss the third type of pwm technique which is harmonic injection pwm harmonic injection pulse width modulation it may sound very strange to you because the name itself suggests that we are injecting harmonics into the voltage whereas i have already told you that the aim of pulse width modulation pwm technique is to suppress the harmonics to eliminate the harmonics that's one of the aims of pwm technique apart from you know controlling the fundamental component of inverter output voltage or fundamental component of load voltage then why are we injecting harmonics into pwm waveform what is harmonic injection pwm why do we want to inject harmonics does it it con contradict our requirement that is suppression of uh, this uh, harmonic eliminate or uh, suppression of harmonics which is the requirement or which is one of the objectives main objectives of pulse width modulation technique why are we injecting harmonics the answer to this question is very simple you should remember that there are certain harmonics which i would like to call as friendly harmonics friendly harmonics when you inject these harmonics into the you know pwm voltage waveform say pole voltage waveform then you achieve certain objective so the other objective i will come to that give me a minutes time i will tell you why we are injecting harmonics into the uh, you know uh, modulating wave and uh, what does this harmonic injection what is this harmonic injection pwm and what do we achieve when we inject harmonic into you know modulating signals okay so let us discuss again you know briefly i have a triangular carrier wave whose <coughs> peak negative peak is minus vp and positive peak is plus vp this is the triangular carrier wave <coughs> i have told you that this triangular carrier wave what we do is that we uh, compare it with sine wave a reference sine wave let me call this uh, sine wave this is the modulating wave ma uh, if you remember in last class we had called this we control a this is the sinusoidal modulating signal and then we have another sinusoidal modulating signal because in uh, unipolar pwm technique the high frequency triangular carrier wave is compared with Uh, fundamental frequency reference sine waves or modulating waves we have two waves which are 180 degrees phase shifted with respect to each other so this is the other modulating wave mb which in last class we denoted by we control b the question is you may ask a question why are we taking these uh, modulating waves as constant waves whereas i have already told you <coughs> that these modulating waves ma for example this is ma and this is mb they are sinusoidal waves why i am showing them as dc wave or constant wave it's not constant sinusoidally varying the answer to this question is that since triangular carrier wave has a very high frequency for example the switching frequency may be as high as 10 kilohertz that means there are 10000 cycles of triangular carrier wave in one cycle of a reference sine wave okay this this may be my reference sine wave and when we have large number of triangular carrier waves and if we take half of the carrier or we take one carrier in that one carrier carrier wave this modulating signal will appear fairly constant okay so i hope you have understood why we have taken we have taken half of the carrier cycle we have not taken full carrier full carrier is like this i have taken half of the carrier cycle in half of the carrier cycle both the sinusoidal modulating signals ma and mb or we control and we control b they appear as you know constant waves over a, over half a carrier cycle okay so if you draw the power circuit diagram of your uh, uh, single phase pwm voltage source inverter 
Let me reproduce its power circuit diagram again. This is the power circuit diagram of a single phase PWM voltage source inverter using unipolar PWM technique. These are load terminals A and B across which we have a load connected. Load voltages, you know, V0 and load current is I0. And we have a DC bus. DC bus voltage is VDC. And <laughs> if this is the midpoint of DC bus capacitors. This is VDC by 2 and this voltage is also VDC by 2. Fine. The, this is phase leg A. This is phase leg B. This phase leg A has two switches. Top switch TA plus and bottom switch TA minus. Similarly, phase leg B has two switches, IGBT switches. Top switch is TB plus and bottom switch is TB minus. Let us see what happens here. Let me first of all draw the waveform for pole voltage, uh, pole voltage uh, VAO. Okay. Now pole voltage VAO will be plus VDC when top switch TA plus is on, and it it will be minus VDC by two when bottom switch <coughs> TA minus is on. Similarly, pole voltage VBO will be plus VDC by two when top switch TB plus is on. And it will be minus VDC by 2 when bottom switch TB minus is on. Now we can see from here the modulating wave MA or V control A is higher in amplitude than triangular carrier wave from this instant to this instant. So therefore we know the logic whenever the modulating wave is higher in amplitude than triangular carrier wave top switch is turned on. And which top switch will be turned on in phase leg A? TA plus and VAO will be plus VDC by 2. So this is plus VDC by 2. And then from this interval to this interval, you can see <coughs> triangular carrier wave is higher in amplitude than modulating wave MA. So bottom switch of phase leg A is on and VAO will be minus VDC by 2. So it is minus VDC by 2. Right? <clears throat> okay, this is the uh, pole voltage VAO. Now, what about pole voltage VBO? I may have to erase this power circuit diagram because of shortage of space. Let me draw the waveform for mod, uh, this uh, pole voltage VBO. Now, from this instant to this instant, from this instant to this instant, modulating wave MB or V control B is higher in amplitude than triangular carrier wave. So upper switch of phase leg B TB plus will be on and pole voltage VBO will be plus VDC by 2. And from this instant to this instant, the triangular carrier wave is higher in amplitude than reference sine wave or modulating wave MB. So the bottom switch of phase leg B that is TB minus will be on and VAO will be equal to minus VDC by 2. Fine. So therefore, if you want to draw the waveform for, you know, load voltage VAB, which is equal to pole voltage VAO minus VBO, from this instant to this instant, your load voltage is VAO minus VBO, that is VDC by 2 minus VDC by 2, which is 0. So it is 0. And when load voltage is 0, what is the pair of switches which is conducting? TA plus that's top switch of leg A and top switch of leg B, TA plus and TB plus. So I will write here TA plus and TB plus switches are on. So if I draw the power circuit diagram again, it has to be very much clear to you. There should be no doubts. This is VDC by 2, this is VDC by 2, this is midpoint of DC bus capacitors and this is total DC bus voltage VDC and these are various switches, IGBT switches of course. This is top switch of leg A, TA plus, this is bottom switch of leg, phase leg A, TA minus, this is top switch of phase leg B. TB plus bottom switch of phase leg B, TB minus, and this is the load across which we have a load voltage V0 and 
current I naught. This is A, B. Now during this interval, TA plus and TB plus both top switches of both the legs are on and you can see load is shorted by these switches and load voltage obviously is zero. Then from this instant to this instant, you can see pole voltage VAO is plus VDC by 2 and VBO is minus VDC by 2. So what is your load voltage? It's VAO minus VBO that is VDC by 2 minus minus VDC by 2 that is VDC by 2 plus VDC by 2 which is VDC. So this is your load voltage and during this interval it is VDC. Okay. And what is the pair of switches which is conducting during this period? Top switch of leg A, TA plus and bottom switch of leg B. So TA plus and TB minus are conducting during this period. And then we have third interval. In the third interval, VAO is minus VDC by 2, VBO is also minus VDC by 2. So load voltage VAB is VAO minus VBO, it is 0. So it is again 0. And what is the pair of switches which is conducting? Bottom switches of both phase legs, that is TA minus and TB minus, they are conducting. Therefore, your load voltage V0, which is also denoted by VAB, is 0. When it is 0, the top switch is TA plus and TB plus are on. And when it is plus VDC, the top switch of phase leg A and bottom switch of phase leg B, so this pair of switches is on. And when it is 0 again, the bottom switches of both legs, TA minus and TB minus, are on. Right. So this we have already discussed in previous class I'm just uh, repeating what we have discussed already in previous class uh, in order to give a better understanding of harmonic injection PWM now here <clears throat> let me tell you one very important thing if these modulating signals are shifted upward or downward by certain small you know amount you may shift modulating signal V control A or MA by, by a small amount above or below Similarly, this MB or V control B also you may shift by a small amount above and below. So whenever you shift modulating signal MA say by a small amount above and you shift modulating signal MB also by same amount, then what will happen? The inverter output voltage will not change. Inverter output voltage average value will remain same. Only the on period uh, or only the you know zero volt this is zero voltage switching this is zero voltage switching these zero voltage switching time periods will get altered so this will be clear to you if you uh, you know shift these let me shift ma slightly above by a small amount i am shifting it above a small amount by same amount i am shifting mb also so when i am shifting both the waveforms ma and mb let me draw pole voltage VAO again. So this is one point and now the point of intersection is this. So when you go down like this, you go down. So it is something like this. So therefore, during this interval, MA is greater than triangular carrier wave. And top switch of phase leg A is on and VAO is plus VDC by 2. So it is plus VDC by 2. And during this small interval, the triangular carrier wave is higher in amplitude than modulating wave MA. A bottom switch of phase leg A is on and I mean TA minus is on. VAO is minus VDC by 2. So this is VAO it is minus VDC by 2. Fine. What about pole voltage VBO. Let me draw pole voltage VBO with new, uh, you know, uh, with uh, the shifted modulating waves. I have shifted MA M by certain amount. I am shifting MB also by same amount. Now, therefore, pole voltage v, VBO will be, this is the point of intersection. So, when you bring this point of intersection down, so this is your VDC by 2 because during this period you can see MB modulating signal is higher in amplitude than triangular carrier wave top switch of phase leg B is on and VBO is plus VDC by 2 and for rest of the period you can see from this instant to this instant triangular carrier wave is higher in amplitude than modulating sine wave MB 
So bottom switch of phase like VTB minus is on V and VBO is minus VDC by 2. So from this instant to this instant, it's minus VDC by 2. Therefore, what will be load voltage? Let us draw the waveform for load voltage VAB, which is equal to VA0 minus VB0, which is the difference of two pole voltages. Now we can very clearly see from this instant to this instant top switches TA plus and TB plus are on and you know pole voltages are VDC by 2 and VDC by 2 and your load voltage is VAO minus VBO VDC by 2 minus VDC by 2 and it is 0 and this is your pole voltage uh, sorry this is your load voltage it is 0 and for this period you can see Top switch of phase leg A, TA plus and bottom switch of phase leg B, TB minus is on. That's why VAO is plus VDC by 2 and VBO is minus VDC by 2. And what is your load voltage? VAO minus VBO, that is VDC by 2 plus VDC by 2, that is VDC plus VDC. And during this remaining period, bottom switches of both the, uh, you know, uh, legs are on. Because your VAO is minus VDC by 2, that means bottom switch TA minus is on. VBO is also minus VDC by 2, that means bottom switch TB minus is on. And therefore, what is your load voltage? VAO minus VBO is 0. So what has happened? You know, you can call this interval as plus, I mean this switching instant as plus plus, this switching instant as plus minus and this as minus minus. What do you mean by plus plus? Plus plus means top switches of both phase legs are on. TA plus and TB plus both are on. So let us call this plus plus switching state. And during this period, the load voltage is zero. When top switch of phase leg A, TA plus is on and bottom switch of phase leg B, TB minus is on, your load voltage is VDC and that is this instant. And this switching instant can be called plus minus switching state. And then when load voltage is again zero, the bottom switches TA minus and TB minus bo or both the legs are on and load voltage is zero. So let us call this minus minus. So what has happened when I have shifted MA slightly above, MB also slightly above, inverter as far as inverter output voltage, this VDC voltage pulse is concerned. A of VDC voltage pulse. Its on time remains same. Say it is same instead. This is this is the period for which VDC is available across the load and it is the same as in this case. What has changed? The time interval for which you know uh, this uh, plus plus state was there. Plus plus state was there. This time interval has increased. You can see this plus plus state is for smaller period here. So that load voltage is zero and it is for larger period here. So plus plus time I will write here time interval or time period of plus plus switching state plus plus switching state which gives load voltage equal to zero it has increases it increases and the time period for minus minus here you can, you can see load voltage is zero here and this which state is this minus minus bottom switches of both the legs are on ta minus and tb minus 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 state so here it is more here it is less so you can see the time period for minus minus switching state has decreased time period of minus minus switching state which also gives load voltage equal to zero it decreases whereas time period for plus minus switching state this is plus minus switching state which gives load voltage equal to VDC uh, in this case also VDC it remains unchanged so time interval or time period of plus minus switching state which gives load voltage equal to VDC is unchanged therefore if you find average value of load voltage in this case in the first case when uh, you know positions of MA and MB were as given by these black colors and if you find the uh, average load voltage in this case when these modulating signals are slightly shifted up, upward by equal amount the average load voltage v naught remains same it's same it's constant in both the cases only the period for which you know plus plus state which gives zero voltage vector 
and minus minus state which use again zero voltage vector these time intervals change they are increasing plus minus plus plus switching state is increasing and minus minus switching state is decreasing the reverse would happen if you shift these you know um, uh, modulating signals downwards so for example you shift modulating signal in ma and mb both downwards in that case also as far as this uh, time interval plus minus for which switching state plus minus is there which gives load voltage equal to vdc it will remain unchanged but plus plus time interval will decrease and minus minus time interval will increase that means zero voltage vectors time interval it changes but this time interval for vdc pulse plus minus state it does not change so that tells us that if you add something to your modulating wave shift it upwards shift it downwards of course both the modulating waves by same amount it is not going to change the inverter output voltage average value of inverter output voltage will remain same only the on periods of plus plus state and minus minus state they will change they are only going to change okay so therefore <clears throat> we already know uh, in previous class i have uh, in one of the previous classes i have told you that uh, instantaneous value of average pole voltage vao if you remember it is equal to it is given by ma vdc uh, let me call it uh, small ma vdc sin omega 1t okay so vao is equal to instantaneous value of average pole voltage ma what is ma ma is v control by VTRI, VDC, sin omega 1T, because we know that modulation index is V controlled by VTRI. So I can again write instantaneous value of average pole voltage over, a, over half of the carrier period. V controlled by VTRI, again I will write it as a modulation index MA into uh, V, in fact it is VDC by 2, pole voltage has a, a, an amplitude of VDC by 2, not VDC. VDC by 2 sine of omega 1t. Similarly, average instantaneous average voltage of average value of pole voltage VBO that will be MA modulation index MA VDC by 2 sine of omega 1t minus 180 degrees. Because I have you already know that these modulation signals MA or disk of V control A or V control B they are 180 degrees out of phase with each other. We have discussed already in uh, you, uh, previous class these modulating waves while discussing the unipolar PWF technique. So VAO is MAVDC by 2 sin omega 1t and pole voltage average value VBO instantaneous average value of pole voltage VBO is modulation index MAVDC by 2 sin of omega 1t minus 180 degrees. So therefore agar aap you know if you want to find uh, instantaneous average value of load voltage VAB which is also called V0 that will be MA so VDC by 2 plus VDC by 2 is VDC sine of omega 1 T okay so this will be you know uh, instantaneous average value of load voltage so you have to replace VDC by 2 by VDC where MA is the modulation index so this means <clears throat> you are uh, if you take two uh, modulating waves this is your modulating wave v control is this is 0 pi for example 0 pi 2 pi this is modulating wave ma capital a see small ma is modulation index which is v uh, control p value by vtri we already know and capital ma is modulating wave itself which is called v control a b kehte in previous cl class we called it v control a but from now onwards we'll call modulating signal this modulating signal v control a as ma so where is the other v uh, modulating signal other modulating signal is mb which is 180 degrees out of phase with uh, ma so this is other modulating signal sinusoidal signal mb which is also called v control b 
So, uh, since our modulating waves are sinusoidal in nature, I told you in the last class also, why do we choose sinusoidal modulating waves? We choose sinusoidal modulating waves because these sinusoidal modulating waves give us, you know, pole voltages whose instantaneous average values also vary sinusoidally like this. For example, you have two pole voltages. Hai. This MA is, it, it is responsible for producing pole voltage VAO. Okay, let me write VAO here. This is omega t axis. This is 0. This is pi and 2 pi. So this is my instantaneous average value of model, uh, pole voltage VAO. This is pole voltage VAO. It's instantaneous average value. If you remember, in previous class, we have already discussed it. When you move from one carrier cycle to another carrier cycle, the average value of the instantaneous average value of pole voltage changes sinusoidally like this in positive half cycle as well as in negative half cycle we already know what about pole voltage vb pole voltage vb will also change sinusoidally in the same manner as modulating signal v control b so this will be our pole voltage vb this is pole voltage vbo if you see pole voltages, they are actually like this. They transition from plus VDC to minus VDC, but when you take their average values, they vary like this. We have already discussed it in the previous class. So this is instantaneous average pole voltage VBO. And therefore we know that instantaneous average load voltage V0, which is also called VAB. What is that? That is VAO minus VBO. So that is always equal to the difference of these pole voltages, VAO minus VBO, VO minus VBO. At each and every point, the instantaneous average load voltage will be difference of the two pole voltages. And that will be something like this. This is 0, this is pi, and this is 2 pi. So this is instantaneous average value of load voltage V0 which is equal to VAB and which is equal to VAO minus VBO. So at each and every instant you, the, your load voltage, instantaneous average load voltage is VAO minus VBO, VO minus VBO. So since your pole voltages, their instantaneous average values vary sinusoidally. Your load voltage which is VAO minus VBO, it also varies. Instantaneous average values also vary sinusoidally. So this is instantaneous average value of load voltage when you move from one carrier cycle to another carrier cycle otherwise you know that uh, actual load voltage is something like this in the positive half cycle and in the negative half cycle it varies like this 0 to VDC, 0 to VDC, 0 to minus VDC this is 0, pi, 2 pi but if you take average value the average value varies sinusoidally so since your uh, uh, average value of uh, instantaneous average pole voltages vary in the same manner as modulating waves sinusoidally, the load voltage, which is VAO minus VBO, it also its instantaneous average value also varies sinusoidally as given in this fashion. Okay. So <clears throat> let us now come to the point. Why harmonic injection? Why do we want to inject the harmonic? <clears throat> So I will uh, now discuss with you harmonic injection technique. I will write here. Um, so therefore, uh, I can say that if MA is your modulating wave, sinusoidal line, and B is another modulating wave, uh, 180 degrees out of phase with respect to each other. So if I add uh, a common mode signal, MCM, to modulating wave, MA, my modulating wave will be, be now MA star. So what is MA star? It's actual modulating wave plus some common mode signal. Similarly, modulating wave MB star will be actual modulating wave MB plus MCM. MCM means, what is MCM? It is common mode voltage. Common mode voltage. It is a signal which is called common mode signal or common mode voltage which is added to both modulating signals because just a few moments back I told you that if you shift actual modulating wave up or down 
both modulating waves are put out by same amount it's not going to change the average load voltage of the inverter only the time periods uh, for which you know these plus plus and minus minus switching states their time period changes plus minus time period does not change so that means inverter output voltage is unchanged it does not change it uh, you know uh, it changes your modulating waves your modulating wave gets you know modified when you add some common mode signal to ma as well as mb but when you find inverter output voltage what is inverter output voltage average value that is you can say ma star minus mb star when you find ma star minus mb star that is ma plus mcm minus what is mb star is mb minus mcm since this mcm is common mode voltage it subtracts so this is simply equal to ma minus mb so you are ever instantaneous average value of load voltage previously when you had not added any common mode signal to the inverter uh, to the modulating signals just few moments back we have seen that instantaneous average load voltage is difference of two modulating signals ma minus mb of course it is uh, vao minus vbo but since vao and vbo pole voltages are determined by ma and mb ma determines vao mb determines vbo so we can say it is ma minus mb and when you add some common mode signal to both modulating signals modify them both of them get modified they may be shifted above below equally but the load voltage does not get modified load voltage still remains ma star minus mb star this common mode voltage in the load voltage this common mode voltage remains there in the pole voltages but when you subtract the two pole voltages this common mode voltage gets subtracted and your inverter instantaneous value of inverter average output voltage remains same ma minus mb or vao minus vb it is not changing so therefore this gives us an idea that we can uh, inject some common mode voltage into modulating wave that is not going to change inverter average output voltage that is going to remain same but we are going to um, get some advantages what are the advantages so let me discuss with you even harmonic injection pw what are we doing in even harmonic injection pw we have a modulating wave MA, which controls phase lag A. A mera inverter hai. Let me draw the inverter power circuit diagram again for better clarity. You have to understand it. This is top switch TA plus of phase lag A, bottom switch TA minus of phase lag A. Similarly, this is the phase lag B. This is top switch. TB plus of phase leg B and this is the bottom switch TB minus of phase leg B. These are the load terminals A and B across which we have connected a load and load voltage is V0 and load current may be I0. And this is our DC bus voltage and DC bus voltage is split into equal voltages VDC by 2, VDC by 2 across the two series connected DC bus capacitors whose midpoint is O. Fine. <clears throat> so, uh, what we are doing, we can inject now even harmonic component in your modulating wave. The question is, why should I inject even harmonic component in uh, my modulating wave? My actual modulating wave is MA or V control A, which controls the switching of phase leg A and which, of course, controls the pole voltage VAO. What I will do, I will add some. Mod, uh, common mode signal to it which is an even harmonic voltage so that will modify my you know uh, modulating signal my modulating signal will be now ma star which is ma plus some common mode voltage similarly i have another modulating signal mb which is sinusoidally varying and that controls the switching of phase leg b and hence it controls the pole voltage vbo to this modulating wave also i am adding the same even harmonic MCM common mode voltage and it gets modified to MB star. So MB star is MB plus MCM. Now when I find the load voltage V0 which is equal to VAB, it is equal to MA star minus MB star or it is equal to VAO minus VBO. So MCM and MCM they will get cancelled. 
so it will be simply equal to ma minus mb so it will remain same it's not going to change then why are we if load voltage remains same instantaneous average load voltage remains same it is sinusoidally varying then why are we injecting even harmonics into the pole voltages we are doing this because this results in bus clamping pwm which is our fourth you know uh, type of pwm technique i will write here bus clamping even harmonic injection pwm results in bus clamping pwm with unequal loading of devices <clears throat> let me uh, rub it off and start from top i can start from here i will write here bus clamping pwm pulse width modulation with unequal loading with unequal device loading unequal device loading what does that mean you have to understand what is bus clamping pwm so for this purpose we are using even harmonic injection pwm so this even harmonic injection pwm is a responsible for bus clamping technique bus clamping pwm what is bus clamping pwm it will be clear to you in a minute's time so what we are doing see it's very interesting to see you have to understand it it's very interesting discussion we have two modulating signals ma and mb ma controls switching of phase leg a and mb controls switching of phase leg b and hence ma controls pole voltage vao and mb controls pole voltage vbo and this is my ma and mb let me denote let me draw ma like this dotted dotted waveform so this is modulating wave ma 0 pi 2 pi and let us suppose it is 0 0.8 positive peak and its negative peak is minus 0 0.8 we already know mb which controls the another modulating reference sin sinusoidal signal which controls the switching of phase leg b it's also sinusoidal but uh, out of phase with ma by 180 degrees that which gives unipolar pwm technique this is my mb so these are my two modulating waves and you know uh, we have already discussed in the previous classes that previous class that these two modulating waves v control a and v control b or ma and mb they are compared with high frequency common triangular carrier wave and that results in the switching of the two phase legs in such a way that we get unipolar pwm output voltage waveform like this okay that gives you that's called unipolar pwm technique now in this case what i am doing what we are doing we are ad adding even harmonic to both modulating signals ma and mb so even harmonic means something like this i would like to add something like this to both ma as well as mb okay what is this this is even harmonic waveform even of course it is second harmonic waveform even harmonic waveform okay this waveform represents this is mcm common mode voltage but it is even harmonic waveform so i will add this even harmonic waveform to both modulating signals sinusoidal modulating signals ma as well as mb now the question is how to derive this mcm how to calculate or derive the even harmonic signal even harmonic wave or even harmonic signal which is also called common mode signal mcm the rule is that see this is 1.0 here aapka 1.0 hai here the amplitude is 1.0 and this is minus 1.0 in order to get this modulating signal even harmonic wave what we are doing from this 1.0 in the positive half cycle 0 to pi from this 1.0 i am subtracting ma actual uh, sinusoidal modulating signal so i will write here in 
or let me give more space in positive half cycle positive half cycle means 0 to pi that is this subtract actual modulating wave ma from 1.0 see this is your 1.0 so you will get 1.0 minus ma that will give you mcm common mode signal which is even harmonic let us try to do it see it's very interesting 1 minus 0 so this is my modulating wave ma i am subtracting it from 1 so 1 minus i will start from here 1 minus 0 is 1 so it starts from here then as I move forward, so 1 minus this, 1 minus this, 1 minus this, so it is decreasing because I am uh, I am subtracting this sinusoidal wave MA from 1. So what will happen? I will get something like this. It is decreasing. And at the peak of MA, what is the peak of MA? It's 0.8. So what is 1 minus 0.8? 1 minus 0.8 is 0.6. And that 0.6 is somewhere here. This is 0 0.6. Okay. So therefore, I will get modulating wave like this, this this common mode wave like this. So this is my MCM. MCM. So I got first half cycle of common mode. Similarly, in the negative half cycle, also same procedure is applied. Uh, this MB is now subtracted from 1.0. In positive half cycle, MA is subtracted from 1.0. In negative half cycle, I will write here in negative half cycle how do you get even harmonic wave mcm subtract modulating signal mb from 1.0 to get the common mode signal mcm that means mcm is equal to 1.0 minus mb this is your 1.0 line this may say mb subtract kar lije. so here it is 0.8 1 minus 0.8 here is 0 0.6 that is this or jab of 1 may say ye sine wave subtract karenge. so you will get something like this so this is mcm so this is mcm for positive half cycle for negative half cycle also it is there in the positive half cycle how, how will we get this is the even harmonic you know common mode signal mcm okay it's even harmonic signal how do we get it in the positive half cycle? By subtracting from 1 MA, 1 minus MA. So we get like this. In the negative half cycle, we obtain it from the equation 1 minus MB. So 1 minus MA gives this, 1 minus MB gives this. So this is my common mode signal. And the rule is this, that the common mode signal is added to actual modulating signal to get modified modulating signal. So MA star will be now MA plus MCM. Similarly, modified modulating wave and B star will be actual modulating wave plus common mode signal. MC. Let us try to draw that. Now I will use blue color for this positive half cycle. In the positive half cycle, now this is your actual modulating wave, MA. To this, you have to add MCM or your MCM. So start from 0, 0, 1 plus 0 is 1. Then as you move forward, this MCM decreases sinusoidally and uh, this MA increases sinusoidally by the same amount so that when you reach this point okay at this point what is MA amplitude is 0.8 and what is um, uh, okay I'm sorry yeah, 0 0.2 0 0.6 I'm sorry here it is 0 0.2 मुझे थोड़ा नीचे ले जाना पड़ेगा ये भी नीचे ले जाना पड़ेगा दिस इज 0 0.2 0 0.2 बिकॉज़ लेट मी रिपीट हाउ डू यू गेट दिस एमसीएम 1 minus MA uh, देखिए यहां पीक पे MA इज 0.8 सो व्हाट इज 1 minus 0.8 दैट्स 0.2 ये 0.2 है सिमिलरली हियर इट्स 0.2 ओके नाउ लेट अस लेट अस गेट दिस मॉडिफाइड मॉडुलेटिंग वेव MA स्टार now this MA star is MA plus MCM. This is your MA sinusoidally varying and this is MCM which is also sinusoidally varying like this. Okay, you start from here. So the MCM plus MA, 1 plus 0 is 1. As you move towards right, 
this MCM decreases sinusoidally and MA increases sinusoidally and when you re reach peak at peak MA is its amplitude is 0.8 and what is the amplitude of MCM it is 0.2 what is 0.8 plus 0.2 that's one so jab aap yahan se yahan move karenge, this wave plus this wave all the through will give one to give an amplitude of one so ye aapki modified signal reference uh, signal hai modulating signal ma star in positive half cycle but negative half cycle may in negative half cycle uh, what is this it is this wave minus this Abhaap, yeah, dekhe, uh, this is mcm uh, in fact it is ma plus mcm this is ma and this is uh, this is mcm and this is ma ma aapka ye hai, negative half cycle so this minus this is zero Jab aap yahan pochege, aage aage jayenge, when you go move forward this minus this this minus this sorry this plus this this plus this this plus this this plus this or jab aap yahan pochege, this is c this is 0.2 and this is minus 0.8 what is 0.2 minus 0.8 at the peak 0.2 minus 0.8 is minus 0.6 that is somewhere here this is minus 0.6 so uh, this wave plus this wave because your ma star is ma plus mcm and this is your ma this is your mcm and this is your ma ma ka negative half cycle when you add this signal to this signal you will get something like this ye aapki ma star hai for negative half cycle pi to 2 pi for positive half cycle this is your ma star for positive half cycle it is equal to 1.0 because this plus this at all points remains equal to 1 and for negative half cycle mcm plus ma i may ab negative hai so this plus this it goes down becomes negative and goes up so this is your ma star similarly what is your mb star your mb star is mb plus mcm aapka mb ka hai ye aapka mb hai aur mcm yahi wave hai ab aap negative half cycle mein ye wave aur ye mb add kar lijiye this plus this this plus this this plus this you will come down and for example when uh, ma is at its peak uh, i mean when mcm is at its you know it has a value of 0.2 what is the peak of mb at that time it is minus 0.8 so minus 0.8 plus 0.2 is minus 0.6 so aap niche aayenge ye aapki waveform hai aur fir upar jayegi so this is it and in the negative half cycle from pi to 2 pi this wave plus this wave because your mb star i will repeat it is mb plus mcm mb aapka positive ho gaya aur ye aapka mcm hai when you add these two at each and every point the addition will be one so this is your mb star so ye aapki do signals hai. this is ma star positive up cycle mein ye one hai negative up cycle mein aise sinusoidally down hoti hai aur ye mb star hai dusri modulating wave positive up cycle mein ye aise sinusoidal pattern mein change hoti hai negative up cycle mein ye clamped to one per unit hai one pe so now you have to understand what does it mean now we can see <clears throat> let us take positive half cycle positive half cycle positive half cycle means 0 to pi radians this is 0 and this is pi a pi hai. from 0 to pi you are modulating wave which controls the switching of you know phase lag a Mod, uh, the, the modified modulating wave MA star it is clamped to positive DC bus it has a fixed value 1.0 so when it has a fixed value 1.0 that means the top switch TA plus is permanently on okay so since MA star is equal to 1 which means the top switch of phase leg A TA plus is on during entire positive half cycle during positive half cycle yes yeah, it and it does not switch it does not switch it is permanently on during the positive half cycle it does not switch at all 
then during this positive half cycle what about mb star ye to ma star hua ma star is one which means ta plus is permanently on and it clamps phase leg a to positive dc bus which means phase leg a ye phase leg a is clamped to positive dc bus so since ta plus is permanently on a is permanently connected to positive dc bus and vao is permanently equal to pole voltage vao is all throughout equal to vdc by 2 during this period okay so iska matlab vao vdc by 2 average value of load voltage is this pole voltage vf since ta plus is permanently on vao is equal to vdc by 2 so phase lag a is clamped to positive dc bus that's why it's called bus clamping pwm technique a particular phase lag is clamped to positive dc bus since during positive half cycle of uh, the inverter output voltage that is 0 to pi the mo uh, modified modulating wave ma star which controls the switching of phase lag a it is equal to 1 that means ta plus is permanently on it is on it's it's not switching on off is kind of you right it is permanently on and it connects pole a it clamps it to positive dc bus ye positive dc bus ke sath clamp karta hai and at the same times from 0 to pi the modulating modified modulating signal mb star it is not clamped to positive dc bus iski switching ho rahi hai iska average value aise change ho raha hai iska average value aise change ho raha hai matlab ye pole voltage aise change ho rahi hai चेंजिंग पॉजिटिव निगेटिव लाइक दिस और उसका एवरेज वैल्यू जब आप निकालेंगे ये पहले पॉजिटिव है ये फिर निगेटिव जा रहा है इट्स वेरिंग लाइक दिस इन दिस मैनर ओके दिस प्लस वी डी सी बाई टू माइनस वी डी सी बाई टू प्लस वी डी सी बाई टू माइनस वी डी सी बाई टू समथिंग लाइक दिस एंड इंस्टेंटेनियस एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ पोल वोल्टेज बी बी ओ इट वेरी इज लाइक दिस दैट मीन्स एज फार एज फेज लेग बी इज कंसर्न इट इज स्विचिंग सो फेज लेग b phase leg a is not switching a is phase leg a is permanently clamped to positive dc bus but phase leg b is switching because phase leg b ki modulating wave aise change ho rahi hai which uh, means that phase leg b is switching when it is switching that's why your uh, pole voltage vbo is changing sinusoidally like this so phase leg b is switching phase leg b switching means that's tb plus is on sometimes and tb minus is on sometimes so therefore agar aap load voltage dekhenge if you see your load voltage let me draw load voltage somewhere here yahan load voltage agar main draw kar raha i have already told you that load voltage is not going to change the average value of instantaneous average value of load voltage changes sinusoidally it's like it changes like this it does not change it changes sinusoidally although you are modulating waves are not sinusoidal your modulating wave is one during positive half cycle and then changes sinusoidally during negative half cycle similarly the modified modulating wave mb star changes sinusoidally in the positive half cycle but it is equal to one it's clamped to positive dc bus in the negative half cycle so but i have already told you that when you find load voltage v not it is vao minus vbo a vao Mm, uh, it is equal to which is equal to m a star minus m b star, which is equal to m a star is m a plus common mode signal minus m b star is m b minus common mode signal. जो common mode signal ये है सक even harmonic signal वो subtract होती है load voltage में. So your load voltage is still m a minus m b and it is sinusoidally varying because your m a and m b they are sinusoidally varying. your pole voltage is, you know since your ma and mb are sinusoidally varying your load voltage is also sinusoidally varying okay so how do you get this pole voltage agar aap actual pole voltage dekhenge it will be like this positive half cycle mein 0 pi aur negative half cycle mein it's like this 2 pi to agar aap iska average value nikalenge change is sinusoidally like this like this so it becomes same as this so this is average instantaneous average value of load voltage but actual load voltage will be something like this so that means in the positive half cycle of inverter output voltage 0 to pi inverter output voltage is 0 plus vdc 0 plus vdc 0 plus vdc like that 
So therefore, inverter output voltage V0 is 0 and TA plus is permanently on. We already know it's permanently on. Or phase leg may phase leg B may TB plus is also on. TA plus is on, TB plus is on. Because when TA plus TB plus top switches of two legs are on, your load is shorted by these two switches and load voltage is zero. So that may be this instant, zero instant. Uske baad aapki load voltage VDC ho jati hai. So your load voltage after this becomes VDC. TA plus is permanently on during this period. It's not switching. But phase leg B mein pehle TB plus on tha, ab TB minus on hai. TB minus on. So it's key switching ho gai. The switching changes from TB plus to TB minus. And when TA plus is on, TB minus is on, what is load voltage? It is equal to plus VDC. You can see it's plus VDC. Uske baad, you can see in half carrier cycle mein load voltage fir se zero ho jati hai. If you try to understand it from that uh, half carrier period, jo thodi der pahle mein aapko samjha hai. Load voltage is again zero. Uh, TA plus on, TB plus on. Switching TA plus to permanently on hai during entire positive up cycle. So switching TB minus se TB plus fir se ho jati hai. Toh, on. Just few moments back, I, you saw that load voltage is equal to zero. It is equal to VDC. It is equal to zero again. When it is zero, TA plus TB plus is on. When it is VDC, TA plus TB minus is on. And when it is zero again, TA minus TB minus is on. In, if you are uh, modulating waves are sinusoidal modulating waves, MA and MB. You have seen just few moments back. But when you are injecting even harmonics in your modulating waves, your modulating waves are not sinusoidal. They are like this. Like modulating wave MA star is like this and MB star is like this. And what that does, for example, if you take modulating signal MA star, during positive up cycle, the switch TA plus is on it's not turning off. So your load voltage is zero. TA plus TB plus is on, right? It is VDC, TA plus TB minus is on. And it is zero again, TA plus TB plus is on, not TA minus TB minus. Because the TA is not switching. It is on during entire positive half cycle. It's not switching, it is on. So TA plus TB. So that means pile TB plus on tha, fir TB minus on ho gaya, fir TB plus fir se on ho gaya, and it will happen again and again. That means phase leg B is switching, but phase leg A is not switching. TA plus is permanently on, which clamps phase leg A to positive DC bus. Jabki phase leg B mein switching ho jati hai, aur aapki inverter output voltage aise vary hoti hai, jiska uh, every instantaneous average value sinusoidally vary hota hai, like this. Okay. Similarly, in the negative half cycle, Right here in negative half cycle, which means pi to 2 pi. It's very interesting to see in negative half cycle may modified modulating wave MB star jo hai, wo one hai. MB star is one. Whereas MA star is not one. MA star sinusoidally very good. So when MB star is one, that means the phase leg B. Uh, TB plus which means when MB star is 1 which means top switch of phase leg B TB plus is on jo permanently during this entire negative half cycle pi to 2 pi Ye switch nahi hota hai. not switching it's not switching it is permanently on Ye on hi rehta hai for entire negative half cycle pi to 2 pi whereas you can see since MA star is moving you know it's changing sinusoidally that means phase leg A is switching so first of all, I will write that means phase leg B, phase leg B is since TB plus is permanently on, B is permanently connected to positive DC bus and pole voltage VBO is plus VDC by 2. That means phase leg B is clamped to positive DC bus, is clamped to positive DC bus. Phase leg B is clamped to positive DC bus and phase leg A is switching. Phase leg a is switching. A phase leg A switch ho rahi. A positive half cycle mein TA plus was on during the entire positive half cycle 0 to pi which was clamping phase leg A to positive DC bus and phase leg B was switching and it was giving voltages, positive voltage pulses like this. In the negative half cycle of inverter output voltage pi to 2 pi you can see MB star is 1 that means phase leg B is uh, you know, TB plus is on during the entire negative half cycle. It is not switching, which clamps phase leg B to positive DC bus, whereas phase leg A is switching. 
When phase like A is switching, see your inverter output voltage now varies like this. Inverter output voltage is zero. When it is zero, that means since TB plus is permanently on during the entire negative half cycle, so TA plus be on ho jata hai. So TA plus TB plus on hai. Dono on hai. When both are on, load is shorted and load voltage is zero. And it is equal to minus VDC. When TB plus to on hi rehta hai. Pahle ya is interval mein TA plus on tha. Since phase leg A now switches. Now switching will change from TA plus to TA minus. So TA minus on. Now you can see TA minus and TB plus are on. TA minus and TB plus are on. This is the pair of switches which is on. So that makes load voltage equal to minus VDC. And then it is again zero. Then you know phase leg A is switching back to TA plus. So TB plus is already on. So TA plus TB plus on. So this is how it changes and this is your load voltage. It is zero. When it is zero, TA plus TB plus is on. When it is minus VDC, you can see when it is minus VDC, TA minus TB plus is on. And when it is zero again, TA plus TB plus is on. Right? So therefore in the positive half cycle of inverter output voltage, MA star, modified modulating signal MA star is one which makes TA plus permanently on, it does not switch, phase leg A is clamped to positive DC bus and phase leg B switches. It gives this type of voltage waveform during positive half cycle. And in the negative half cycle, MB star is equal to 1, that is modified modulating signal MB star is 1, which permanently conducts TB plus TB plus is on during entire negative half cycle which clamps phase leg B to positive DC bus and phase leg A is switching and when phase A leg is switching it gives inverter output voltage 0 minus VDC 0 minus VDC like this so instantaneous average load voltage varies same setting now you may ask a question sir why have we modified our modulating signals to SAT sinusoidal MA MB. Uswakabi Hamari inverter output voltage essay very or eighty sinusoidally. Why did we do this? Why did we modify our uh, modulating signals? Abhamari modulating signals I say we take it. This is MA star over a MB star. Yeah, MB star. This also gives same inverter output voltage, average value. What have we gained out of this? So we have gained, uh, try to understand what we have gained out of this. In the positive half cycle, TA plus is permanently on. It is not switching, whereas phase leg B is switching. TB plus, TB minus, TB plus, TB. They are switching at switching frequency. But in the positive half cycle of, you know, inverter output voltage, since MA star is 1, TA plus is not switching. That means phase leg A is not switching. It is clamped to positive DC bus. And when phase leg A is not switching, the switching losses are reduced because switching losses depends upon the switching of the devices. The faster that the device switches, higher will be the switching power losses. And when TA plus is not switching at all, it is permanently on. It's not switching. It's on off nahi ho hai. For entire positive half cycle, TA plus is on. It clamps phase leg A to positive TC bus. So it's not switching. Ye puri leg switchy nahi ho rahi hai. So therefore, switching losses are drastically reduced in phase leg A. Similarly, in the negative half cycle of inverter output voltage, that means from pi to 2 pi, your MB star is 1 that permanently conducts, that makes TB plus permanently on. During the entire negative half cycle of inverter output voltage, TB plus is on, ye off hota hi nahi hai. That means phase leg B is clamped to positive DC bus. Phase leg B may switching in nahi ho rahi hai. That means phase leg A may switching ho rahi hai. Maybe at 5 kilohertz, maybe at 10 kilohertz, depending upon the switching frequency. That means this leg may switching ho nahi rahi. So switching power loss is drastically reduced ho hai. So therefore in the positive half cycle of inverter output voltage, phase leg A does not switch at all. Whereas phase B leg switches and in the negative half cycle of inverter output voltage, phase leg B does not switch but phase leg A switches. So therefore, switching power losses are reduced. Switching power losses are drastically reduced. This is the advantage, drastically reduced due to bus clamping. 
because in the positive half cycle of inverter output voltage phase lag is clamped to positive dc bus and phase lag if switch nahi hoti to isme switching power losses khatam ho jate hain and in the negative half cycle of inverter output voltage phase lag b is clamped to positive dc bus so bus clamping or phase lag b mein switching nahi hoti to isme switching power losses khatam ho jate hain so therefore switching power losses are reduced by half okay With bus clamping PWM technique, when you are uh, injecting even harmonics, जब आपकी common mode voltage even harmonics से उससे आपकी actual you know modulating waves modify हो जाती है like this. In the positive half cycle there is no switching of phase lag A. In the negative half cycle there is no switching of phase lag B. Whereas in the positive half cycle phase lag B switches and in the negative half cycle phase lag A switches. So therefore your switching power losses are reduced by half. This is the advantage of bus clamping PWM technique. That's why you are doing. Otherwise, inverter output voltage does not change. It remains sinusoidally varying like this. Okay, but because of this bus clamping technique, the inver the inverter switching power losses are drastically reduced. Now you can see I have written here bus clamping PWM technique with unequal device loading. Unequal device loading means if you see in the half cycle. Mein dekhe, TA plus is on for entire positive half cycle. TA plus is conducting for entire positive half cycle. This switch is not going on. It is on. It is conducting. Positive half cycle means zero to pi. And TB plus, that is the top switch of phase leg B, is conducting for entire negative half cycle. For entire Negative half cycle of inverter output voltage that is pi to two pi. So what about the bottom switches T A minus and T B minus? They are switching. They are switching. होती है लेकिन वो they are not permanently on for uh, half cycle. Only T A plus and T B plus. That, that means the conduction losses and in T A plus and T B plus will be higher than in T A minus and T B minus. There are two types of losses in power semiconducting devices. One is called the switching power loss. Switching power loss, and another type of loss is conduction loss. Conduction loss is the loss. Conduction loss. Conduction loss is the loss in a switch when it is conducting. So simple I square R loss. The switching power losses are because of on off of the switch because of switching. See in the positive half cycle of inverter output voltage zero to pi, T A plus is on for the entire positive half cycle. So, its me conduction switching power loss is to zero. Its me ho rhi hai, but conduction loss is its me increase ho rhi hai. In the negative half cycle of inverter output voltage that is pi to two pi, T B plus is on for entire negative half cycle. Although its me switching power loss nahi hoti, but conduction losses are there. Whereas T A minus or T B minus में switching power losses होती हैं, but conduction losses are much less than conduction losses in T A plus and T B minus. So therefore, out of the four switches, T A plus, T B plus, T A minus, T B minus, the conduction losses are more in T A plus and T B plus because they are on for entire half cycles. Like T A plus is on for entire positive half cycle and T B plus is on for entire negative half cycle. So this causes unequal डिवाइस लोडिंग तो इसमें डिवाइस लोडिंग अनिकवल हो जाती है इनकी लोडिंग ज्यादा हो जाती है और इनकी लोडिंग कम हो जाती है सो वी हैव अचीव एन एडवांटेज द एडवांटेज वाज दैट बिकॉज ऑफ इंजेक्शन ऑफ इवन हार्मोनिक्स इनटू द मॉडुलेटिंग वेव द मॉडुलेटिंग वेव गॉट मॉडिफाइड लाइक दिस बोथ मॉडुलेटिंग वेव्स एंड दैट रिजल्टेड इन बस क्लैंपिंग पीडब्ल्यूएम वेयर बाय स्विचिंग पावर लॉसेस वर रिड्यूस्ड बाय हाफ बट द द लोडिंग ऑफ फोर स्विचेस इज नॉट Uniform. There is unequal device loading. The upper two switches, their conduction losses are higher than bottom two switches. So therefore, uh, this uh, bus clamping PWM technique with unequal device loading has this drawback that the uh, devices are unequally loaded. So in next class, inshallah, uh, in tomorrow's class, next class, we will try to modify this. Uh, even harmonic injection technique in such a way that all the four devices are equally loaded 
which gives bus clamping PWM technique because the advantage of bus clamping PWM is that switching power losses are reduced by half. But simultaneously, we would like to ensure that all the four devices, all the four switches are equally loaded. So therefore, uh, I will conclude my today's lecture here. Please uh, go through this lecture. So we have learned in today's lecture that by injecting even harmonics in the uh, modulating waves, the modulating waves get modified which uh, modifies the pole voltages but inverter output load voltage which is VAO minus VBO that does not get modified that remains the same but uh, you know the advantage of uh, modifying these uh, modulating waves and hence modifying the pole voltages is that it results in bus clamping of PWM uh, bus clamping of you know phase legs in the positive off cycle phase leg A is clamped to positive DC bus in the negative off cycle phase leg B is clamped to positive DC bus and hence since the uh, there is bus clamping the switching power losses are drastically reduced but the problem with the uh, the even harmonic injection technique that we have discussed today is that it uh, no doubt it causes bus clamping PWM and hence reduces the switching power losses but it results in unequal loading of the devices how to uh, have bus clamping with equal loading of the devices will discuss in next class. Please go through this lecture in case of any uh, queries, get connected to me through WhatsApp or any other medium. Thank you.